Uh, let, me, let me ask a real simple basic question. Yep. Uh, what makes a prairie a prairie? Well, these prairies in the Chicago region adapted over the last 10,000 years. Okay. okay. That's when the last ice retreated north. And so our prairies are associations of plants that live in large communities together. They're supported by the pollinators. They also feed a large number of animals mm -hmm. that are, are uh, working, um, uh, obtaining their, their nutrition from the prairie. And so what makes a prairie are the plants that were native here before the European colonists arrived. Well, thank you so much. This was really just amazing. Yeah. It's a pleasure. So thank glad you could come and visit our garden. Beautiful. Well, I think it's going to get even better. Really? Yeah, we're going to take a look at their wildlife. What would you like to start with? Well, can I get a sample of your pond water? Absolutely. We have 70 acres of lakes, and we'd be glad to share a sample with you. Fantastic. Where do we go? Come this way. All right. Cool. Where are we now? This is Harold Washington College's teaching biology lab. Hi. 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 I'm Mike. Irene. Irene, nice to see you. Kim. Kim, nice to meet you. So I got this uh, vial of pond water, and I was wondering if we could take a look and see if there's any life on the inside. That's just water. Do you really think we'll see anything in there? You'd really be surprised. Even though you can't see anything with the naked eye, and because it looks clear, it doesn't mean there's a whole host of organisms in there. You can find everything in pond water from plants to even animals. Animals like dogs and cats? A <laughs> little bit smaller than dogs and cats. Okay, so what are we talking about there then? Well, you can have everything from one-celled organisms. One cell? One cell. The An whole entire organism is just one cell. The whole organism is just one cell, the it's whole animal. So, so sometimes those... you can see them kind of like a paramecium or oh. an amoeba. All right, so those could be in there. Those could be in there. Also, you could have much bigger animals that consist of multicellular. Okay, so they have a lot of cells that make up the animal. Mm -hmm. And an example would that be like snails and other mollusks, even some leeches, and some daphnia, which we use for a lot of experiments in biology also. And those oh. would all be microscopic? So we need a microscope to see them, right? We do need a microscope to see the single cell organisms and okay. some of the smaller ones. Some you can see with a naked eye, but they're really tiny. Mm -hmm. oh. So that you think we'll need to look at under a microscope? I think with the high power microscopes we have here, we can actually see a lot of cool stuff under here. Okay, why don't you, why don't you prep one up there for us? Sure. Thank you. We would take a microscope slide and we take a slide with a little well in the middle of it. And mm -hmm. it has like a little indentation. So if we do have some animals in there, we don't squish them. Okay. And then we'll take a little drop and put it gently on the slide. Well, you don't need very much, do you? No, no. There are so many organisms and plants and animals in here that just a little drop should show us a lot of different animals. Mm -hmm. Cool. What's that? And this is a cover slip. So it'll keep, first of all, everything from spilling off the slide, and mm -hmm. then it'll keep everything in a position and reduce the glare that you're actually getting from the microscope. Oh, so it's going to help us get a better image, mm -hmm. too? All right. So are we all set? We are all set. Let okay. me see. Bring some in focus. Oh, so you can move it around. You can move it around back and forth. So if you see any animals, you can follow them around. Ooh, I see some cool stuff. You want to take a look? Really? Yeah. Go, go. <gasps> That's what we came here for. Oh my, that's so cool. What is that? Well, that is a Daphnia. That is a multicellular organism. And he lives and eats on algae, usually. And you can find them in all ponds and freshwater, all kinds of freshwater ponds and puddles. Can I take a look? Sure. It looks like he's got some uh, little arms there, bringing, bringing food or something into himself. That's really cool. Oh, that's weird. Can you take a peek at this and sure. let me know what we're seeing? OK, well, that is actually embryos. Those are mollusk embryos, snail embryos. So Whoa. instead of a snail with a shell that's already hatched, okay. what you have is a bunch of eggs that were laid by a snail. And what you can often see is cells from a one cell stage, an animal developing from when it's just one cell into the whole entire animal with the shell. And what we can actually see if we zoom in a little bit is we can see the heartbeat and the eye spots on these guys. And we can see them moving around inside their eggs. You want to take a look? That's so cool. Take a peek. There you go. Wow, you really can. That's so cool. I am amazed. There's so much life in such a tiny little sample. Yeah, well, you want to see some more wildlife? Well, yeah. I think we should go to the zoo. <gasps> really? That's like shooting a fish in the barrel. For sure you'll find wildlife there. No shooting fish in barrels, OK? But again, I think you're going to be surprised. <gasps> All right, we should go. I mean, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. I'm glad you, you saw so some really cool stuff thank under you. there. Take care. Take care. You know, we're here 
because we're going to learn about some research. Cool. Yeah, let's see. Hi. Hey, I'm Mike. Nice to meet you, Mike. This is Kim. Hi. Nice, nice to meet you, Kim. So what do you do? Well, I'm uh, recently the director of Lincoln Park Zoo's new initiative on urban wildlife, or the Urban Wildlife Institute. The urban Wildlife Institute. So what does that do? Well, right now we're trying to investigate or create uh, baselines uh, for the diversity and abundance of animals that live in the Chicago area. So what is your role in all this? What do you study? Well, one of the things we're working on, uh, which is convenient that we're here, is yeah. uh, bees. Can I open so if you one? open these secret doors... Oh, wow! We have a nice Look at honeybee colony. Honeybees, okay. Look at uh, that. And so this is another uh, animal. This is a, a managed honeybee, but there are wild bees too that are all over the city. Okay. And one of the things that we don't know is what, how many there are uh, of any species or, and, or the diversity of the bees. Diversity and of the bees. Does that mean there's more than one kind of bee? Yeah, there are many kinds. This is the managed honeybee. I, you know, I um, think I've seen these, managed honeybees, but, and I think I've also seen bumblebees, Bumblebees, too. those big black and yellow furry yes. ones, which are uh, much less aggressive. So they're, don't be afraid of the of the. They're really, because they're cute. scary. <laughs> these are very important animals uh, in terms of humans because most of our food comes from uh, food sources uh, or plants that provide that are pollinated by bees that we eat. So what would be some of those plants? Um, well, it would be like tomatoes, oh, okay. watermelon, Good food. all the squashes, um, cucumber, mm -hmm. strawberries, um, pretty much anything with the that comes of a big fruit. And in so, fact, um, so Hagen Dazs, the company, yeah. has actually funded a lot of recent research because most of the ingredients in ice cream, like vanilla, yeah, uh, come from uh, pollinator-dependent plants. Really? Yeah. And so, so these guys help pollinate our ice cream. That's right. Well, there isn't an ice cream plant, of course. Of course not, no. But, the but all the that ingredients, it, that's right. We wouldn't have ice cream without the ingredients. That's right. And so uh, recently in the news, there's been a lot of um, people are worried about the loss of the colonies of these managed bees. So they've been suddenly dying out. No one really knows why. The bees leave the nest, but they never come back. So we have these kind of empty hives. And so one, the, way, the only way to kind of support our food industry and agricultural mm -hmm. industry is for native bees and native pollinators to fill that role. 